Hey everyone and welcome back to my Legion class review series where I level every class in the game up to 110, gear them all up, play every spec and relay my findings back to you. Today we're going to be tackling the Druid and well it's the one class that's got four specs so today's video is going to be a big one so let's just get right to it. Feral has went through quite a lot of change, especially in recent times. For most of Legion, it was known to be one of the more complex specs in the game, if played with the competitive talents. Patch 7.3 attempted to fix this problem by rebalancing the class, but first to understand all this, let's take a look at the gameplay. Okay, time for the Feral gameplay explainer. Now there's so much to get through in Feral because of its recent changes in 7.3, plus I've got to cover four specs in one video, so this is, yeah, this is definitely the lightning round, so to speak. Of course, these are quick gameplay explainers to get everyone, mainly people who have never played the spec, up to date with how it plays so you can appreciate the rest of the video. Let's get right into it. Basically, uh, we can bootstrap a lot by saying this is roguelike in a, in a few ways. So you've got energy like a rogue, you've got combo points like a rogue, you've got finishers and generators of those combo points. So yeah, let's just go in and do some of the basics. First of all, we're going to throw Rake in the target generates combo points, does a whole bunch of damage, awesome. Now then, Shred is like your main generator. It uh, gives you a combo point, which is pretty sweet. It does more damage to bleeding targets, so it all sort of plays into itself. I'm just gonna refresh my rake here. Then I'm going to do Rip. Rip costs, so well, ideally you wanna use Rip at five combo points. Does a shed load of damage over time, and overall, you want to keep these two things rolling. Then I'm just gonna get some more combo points back. Um, then when, you know, all your dots are good, you want to use Ferocious Bite, which is just your, you know, your basic sort of um, way to dump excess combo points. Now, you're probably wondering what the hell these uh, shiny lights are, so let's explain those. They're because of Omen of Clarity. So, your auto attacks have a chance to put you into a clear casting state, making your next Shred, Thrash, or Brutal Slash cost zero energy. So... They're free, you just gotta whack them out there, and this uh, gives you a little bit of unpredictability and madness in the, the pace of the gameplay. Now, for me, this is affected by the build that I'm going with, which includes a talent called Moment of Clarity, which causes Omen of Clarity to happen twice as much. So, more free stuff, hurrah! And also, it can stack up to two times, and it increases the damage of said ability by 20%, and increases your max energy by 30. Now, we need to talk about patch 7.3. So, Blood Talons was the way you used to play this if you were doing well. Blood Talons is a good bit more complex. Complex. And basically, we're at the state now where if you're a Mythic Raider, you probably are using Blood Talons unless it's an AoE fight. But for most people, playing Blood Talons suboptimally is going to give you worse performance than playing this slightly easier build well. So for most people, I just say, go with this build. It's really fun and smashy and uh, yeah pretty sweet. Now, I'm also using Brutal Slash. Brutal Slash replaces another ability called Swipe, but the core thing here is it's got 10.5 second recharge, it's got three charges, it does a shed load of energy, and of course it's affected by the clear casting, which due to that talent will also boost its damage up, so it makes this a very fun ability. Another great thing about clear casting is many scenarios you want to spend that clear casting on Thrash to put that um, dot on the target as well, because this is an AoE damage over time. So, yeah, all of that stuff is pretty cool, and I'm just getting so many procs of that now, it's kind of insane. We also need to talk about Tiger's Fury. So even though, or even if you're not going with Blood Talons, you still do get a little bit of DPS snapshotting style gameplay with this. So it's a 30 second cooldown, gives you 60 energy and increases the damage of all attacks um, by 15% uh, for their full duration. So that's great for all of your dots and that effect lasts for six seconds. So as an example, I'm going to run in here, I'm going to Tiger's, even though I've got full energy, I'm going to Tiger's Fury, I'm going to do a rip, I'm going to do a rake, I'm going to do Ashamane's Frenzy, which is another damage over time that is my artifact weapon. And what I've just done there is applied these with a combination of those great buffs. Now, as an example, if I still had Tiger's Fury and I had this clear casting boosted brutal slash, this would do a whole bunch of damage. Plus, this has three charges. So what you could do if a whole bunch of ads spawn, you do your Tiger's Fury and you just go absolutely ham with a crazy amount of damage um, through that. And that kind of is the core. I just want to quickly show you Blood Talents and then we're going to call it a day for Feral. So Blood Talons is kind of, it's a classic Feral thing at this stage. Casting Regrowth or Entangling Roots causes your next two melee abilities to deal 20% at more damage for their full duration. Now, you're probably wondering how the hell do you get a Regrowth out in combat? Simple, Predatory Swiftness, basically, if you do a five-point uh, finisher, it will give you a guaranteed free and instant regrowth, which will 
cause the Blood Talons effect. So I'm going to go in here and, um, yeah, we'll attack our target. The next thing we want to do is, I'll just do a Ferocious Bite. You can see I've now gained this Predatory Swiftness effect, which will give me a free instant uh, regrowth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that regrowth and then go into Tiger's Fury. I'm going to do a Rake and I'm going to do a Rip. Now, that Rake and that Rip were affected by the Tiger's Fury DPS increase and also affected by the Blood Talons DPS increase. Because that also involved me doing a five-point uh, combo spender, it also gave me even more Blood Talons to play with. So as you can see, it's a very involved and complex way of playing, but it certainly is one that's very satisfying. However, for many people, I do believe that instead of, yeah, I, I just believe probably that doing Moment of Clarity Brutal Slash is probably the more fun way for most people. And then we also just have um, King of the Jungle. It's just your big DPS cooldown. Makes everything faster and awesome. I think that's the core of what you need for the rest of this video. So there you go. That's Feral. So where to start with Feral? I mean, there's just a hell of a lot to cover, as you probably noticed. So let's just start with the elephant in the room, Blood Talons. I really appreciate how it works. And I actually really enjoy playing with Blood Talons on target dummy. Getting the best dots possible rolling on a target is really satisfying. But for me, it does kind of fall apart in other aspects of the game. I think it does get to the stage where for most players, it ends up being a little bit too much going on. Blood Talons used perfectly does amazing damage, but if it's not used perfectly, then the Omen build is probably going to pull ahead. I think that, wow, you know, it's got a lot going on with its bosses and they're really interesting, and that, you know, with uh, Blood Talons on tops may be a bit much, and Blizzard agrees, hence 7.3 changes. So let's talk about the upshot of those 7.3 changes. Basically, they're awesome, and playing Feral with Brutal Slash and Omen, the, the build is just fantastic. So the core gameplay of keeping your dots rolling is one that I enjoy, and it's still there, it's still really strong, and with Tiger's Fury, you're still getting some of that dot snapshot in gameplay. Then having more omen procs means that maintaining thrash on targets is something that kind of, you know, opens up because of your more omens, and uh, omen also opens up incredible burst potential with Brutal Slash. So, you know, you can Tiger Fury for the damage boost, use your omen procs on a Brutal uh, Slash, and assuming you've pulled up enough uh, Brutal Slashes in general, uh, in an AoE scenario, the amount of damage you output is, it's just beautiful. Um, so yeah, uh, in an AoE scenario, it's great and that's combined with multi-dotting and aoe as well it's just great um, and then even in single target situations low cooldown of tiger's fury and the high proc rate of talented omen means the pace is really fast and it's really fun and engaging i rarely find it boring to play plus you're a cat and that means you run fast you've got low fall damage you've got loads of really good movement cooldowns in combat you know you get free instant casts of your heal um, you're just utility quality of life is all so great so when it's combined with with that particular talent build a spec that i think is really accessible and also really fun and does have a lot of depth if you want to play it that way especially as well when you get into mythic plus it just feels so natural overall yeah feral i think is just awesome and i love how 7.3 opened it up to more people i think it was a really good move Next, let's talk about Restoration. Restor Druids are well known for being the king of hots. Rather than throwing big chunks of direct healing on the target, they barrage them with a torrent of constant small heals. It's a really different playstyle in comparison to most, so let's jump into the gameplay and see how it feels. Okay, time for the Restor Druid gameplay explainer. By the way, some people, before I get into the rest of it, were wondering why I wasn't clicking my keybinds. Of course, I wasn't doing that. No, why I wasn't using my keybinds or anything. Instead, I was clicking on this thing over here. What is it? It's Voodoo. Basically, it binds in like mouse over macros and all of that stuff um and yeah it's you can go search voodoo if you want i just thought i'd mention the add-on um and there's some other things like it as well but anyway anyway let's talk about the resto druid so it's based on hots let's talk about the hots the iconic one rejuvenation heals the target for 360k over 19 seconds now due to a talent called germination i can apply two of them to the same target so i'm gonna right click myself twice boom i've got two rejuves and i am just getting a decent amount of heals going in. Now, if I was also healing the main tank, I would, or something like that, I would put Life Bloom on. Life Bloom is a really powerful um, heal over time effect. It can only be applied to one target at the same time, so it's kind of, you know, it's important, it's unique, treat it well. Um, and one of the nice things about it is it 
causes moment of clarity, which will cause your next regrowth to be free or yeah, to be free. So what is regrowth? Well, regrowth, pretty simply, it will do straight up a decent sized heal with a little bit of a dot or a hot even afterwards. So you can see how all these abilities are kind of playing into each other nicely. You've got your regrowth there for when targets take a lot of damage and then you keep everyone topped up with your heal over time spells. Then you're probably also, well, you're almost definitely putting effervescence where people are standing. So maybe the melee stack or the rain stack or something like that. We then also have Swift Mend. So if I Swift Mend myself, boom, I get a big heal, which uh, wasn't satisfying because the numbers don't appear over me, but hey, that's what it does. And this is 750k, so it's not as good as Power Word Sanctify, but if Jim's just taken a big bunch of damage where you throw that on him and you know what he'll be grand now in terms of other things that we've got we have wild growth this is your aoe sort of heal um it does 172,000 healing to up to six nearby allies over seven seconds but the thing is the healing per second starts really high and declines over time so it's front loaded which is pretty cool also uh, just the animation for it's pretty sweet so you can see everyone's getting their heals. Now, this one is decently expensive. You don't want to be using it a lot, but, you know, it'll fit in. Uh, it used to be back in Warlords, I'd always be talented into Soul of the Forest. It would mean that my Swift Mend would cause my next Wild Growth to do 75% more healing, and that was really awesome. But Cultivation is uh, just pretty nice. Whenever, basically, whenever Rejuve is on target below 60% health, um, they, they get more healing. So it's great. Now, there's a whole bunch of things in this spec, like little passives and stuff like that, and artifact things that, you know, contribute to your, your hots. I don't want to get too much into those, but I do need to explain these two abilities. Flourish, which is a talent, and Essence of Kahanir, which is your artifact ability. Um, you know what? I'm just going to spread... We'll go mad. Spread the love. Hots for everyone. So I'm going to use these. And then Flourish will basically extend the duration of all hots by six seconds. So I do that, and as you can see those little numbers there, it all increased. Uh, now if I use Essence of Gahanir, it causes the tick rate of my hots, which you can see now, has just doubled. So it increases those by 100%, so it's pretty damn cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of this is just you're spreading your hots, you're keeping, you know, people in your effervescence, and uh, you're getting big wins. It's, yeah, so that, that's kind of the core of Resto, I think, fantasy-wise. There's a lot of other detail, but we don't really need to get into it. Resto is a really interesting one for me. First, and what's important is, it stands out with a unique identity, and if you've seen my Priest video, you'll know that that's something that I really do value in healers. So, the Resto Toolkit, of course, it's a bit more focused towards HOTS, I feel, this time around, as we've got the ability with Flourish and one of our talents to extend our current HOTS. We've got our Artifact ability, which increases their tick rate, and we've got other talent which lets us apply to rejuves to the target and um, so you know how much you enjoy spreading hots and managing that is core to how much you like this spec for me the good news is i love that just like how i enjoy spreading and managing atonement on a disc priest i find the management of my rejuves and my life bloom to be really fun with this spec you know you can prepare for a period of larger damage you know as an example you can use your artifact to amplify healing once you've spread everything out and that's that's really fun to me and it's great that as well your artifact abilities on a low enough cooldown that it's a core part of your gameplay that really matters. I don't think that this amount of fun that I have with the, you know, the hots is like it may be great in a raid, but in Mythic Plus, I think with that scale it really just feels so damn good to play. And of course, we then do have other great abilities, you know, Swift Mend, really powerful, instant heal, that's dead useful. And while it's not sort of in vogue currently, the Soul of the Forest talent, which causes Swift Mend to boost other abilities, is really fun. I loved it back in Warlords of Draenor. Wild Growth, it's fine, whatever, normally, but it's really fun with Soul of the Forest, and if that playstyle is sort of popular again in the future, I'd be really happy, because again, it's a bit like Riptide and Resto Shaman, which I love. Now you've got stuff like as well, like maintaining your effervescence that needs to be reapplied every 30 seconds so you're kind of tracking where groups of players are where the melee stack is and all of that it's not super complex but it is satisfying to see all those ticks sort of you know g going on and then of course you've got tranquility it's great and i'll admit with track it's one of those things where it's fun because it's powerful uh, not because it's interesting but that doesn't take away from the fact that holding the entire damn team together during movement uh, it's really satisfying so for me overall resto is something that i love playing in legion i love the management gameplay of spreading my dots around and basically i kind of like preparing for things and executing and for me the gameplay loop uh, with resto just matches that very well so for what i like in a healer it's great Next up, it's time for the Guardian Druid. 
Imagine having so much health you just don't need to give a damn. That's pretty much the class fantasy of the Guardian Druid. Well, it's that plus Blizzard throwing some random things in so you don't feel like a different flavor of a warrior because it's rage based. So to delve a bit deeper into this, let's check out the gameplay. Okay, time to go through the basics and the core of what a Guardian Druid is. And it, it's kind of easy. And we're going to start it off with our offensive ability. So the first one's Thrash. Eight yard range, strike all nearby enemies doing a bunch of damage and applying a dot as well and when in bear form this can stack on your targets up to three times so you've got all those dots ticking and because it's an eight uh, yard aoe it's great for just getting aggro and everything okay so that's thrash we always want to be using thrash because it's also generating rage we then have mangle so you mangle the target for half a million damage pretty much and it deals 20 percent more damage against bleeding targets so the two of these are doing a whole bunch of damage you can also see that say my thrash can proc a free mangle um which is a really powerful effect we then have swipe swipe does a little bit of damage and you pretty much only use it if you've got nothing else to hit we then have Maul, 45 Rage, single target, does a whole bunch of damage. So you're using this if you're in DPS mode, not defensive mode. Now, to explain what you're doing when you're trying to play defensively, really it's all about spending your Rage. So if you want to do more damage, you're putting your Rage into Maul. If you want to live more, and you probably do because you're a tank, then you're putting your Rage into Iron Fur. So it costs 35 Rage, increases armor by 81% for 10 seconds, and multiple uses of the ability overlap. Now... Overlap, that's important. So if you use one of them and then five seconds use another one, there's going to be a five second period where they overlap and you're getting the effect of two of them at once. So if you smash iron for twice, you are going to be very hardy indeed. And you can actually have quite a high uptime of iron fur when you're playing this. So to easily explain this, I'm going to use iron fur. You can see there it is. I've also done my concords. I'm going to use it again. And you're going to see is in a few seconds that two will turn into a one because the original stack fell off. There you go, just happened. And that's kind of the core of how Iron Fur works. And then the other part of this is we just have a whole bunch of other defensives. So we've got Rage of the Sleeper, which does a whole bunch of damage, um, you know, reduces the damage that you take. It's your artifact ability. We've got Bristling Fur, which will generate some rage for you based on damage taken for eight seconds. So course generating rage feeds into iron fur so it's a defensive cooldown we then have survival instincts super important uh, reduces all damage you take by 63 percent for six seconds however four minute cooldown so you really want to save that thing for when you need it we then have frenzied regeneration costs 10 rage and it will heal you for 20 percent of damage taken in the last five seconds um over the next three seconds so if i give this big angry tree a slap eventually you know you'll do some damage to me and then i'll be able to use my frenzied regeneration to get some of it back so often what happens is, oh, you've taken a bunch of damage, maybe you've got an iron fur on or something like that. You throw in your frenzy regeneration, you get some of your health back, and uh, helps the healer out. We then also have bark skin, which just reduces all damage you take by 20%, does some other stuff, but you don't really need to know. Basically, it's got a whole bunch of defensive cooldowns built into it. Now, what we're going to do to prevent this damage I'm taking, we're going to just throw on maybe two iron furs. You know what, let's just go and do, um, do a frenzy regen as well, and you can see my health's ticking up based on the damage that he just did to me. Now, when time goes on, this guy gets more and more damaging, then the amount of healing that I get from Frenzied Regen is going to increase. That's kind of the core of how this plays. Oh, we also have Incarnation and um, Guardian of Ursoc, which um, is just another one of your cooldowns based on one of my talents. And uh, yeah, you'll do more damage and you'll also uh, get more armor, so you'll live longer. That's kind of the core of how this plays. You've got a whole bunch of cooldowns and you're sort of managing your rage between do I want to do more damage or do I want to live longer? And you're timing all that with the fight. And that's kind of the core of how Guardian place. As you can see from the explainer, you really have a truckload of cooldowns as a Guardian Druid, and that's the thing that stood out to me the most. This is a bit of a problem for me. It feels like Blizzard could not find a unifying gameplay design for it, so rather than having a, like a really unique feeling mechanic or set of abilities, they just kind of threw in a bunch of things which feel rather disconnected from each other. The design of the spec just feels a bit old and tired, even though technically it's quite new. Um, now it does do the job well. You've got a big defensive toolkit. You can handle anything the game throws at you. It's just really boring for me. Um, so, you know, healing through Frenzied Regen, it's it's not that exciting. You hit the, you know, you hit the button, your health goes up a bit, you slap on Iron Fur, and, 
you know, I suppose the idea of, say, the overlapping iron furs, that is the one thing that stands out as being kind of cool, but I just feel like this spec, it needs, like, another gameplay loop going on, you know? Um, its offensive toolkit, it's also kind of boring. You just sort of keep a few abilities on cooldown, and it's very simple. You spend your rage on offensives if you don't think you'll need your defensives, and that's kind of it. Uh, just the synergy between all elements of the, the specs gameplay just isn't really there, and it's not uninteresting. Now, you can, as an example, put Pulverize on. That makes it a bit more interesting, but still, it's, it's, it's not much. Basically, something to manage, like a unique mechanic to a Guardian Druid, in the same way that maybe a Brewmaster has Stagger and it's Brews, and that's what, like, the unique feel. Whereas with this, it's just you got loads of health and a bunch of cooldowns, and to me, that's less interesting. Now, as much as that sounds super negative, it, it's not to say that the spec is annoying. The mechanics are really playable, and they're really smooth. Um, it doesn't feel clunky, I know that's everyone's favourite generic buzzword, so it's, it's less that it's bad, it's just, to me, kinda boring. I'd rather be a madman jumping everywhere as a Vengeance DH, getting all my health back, uh, a nigh unkillable DK, or a really, you know, unique feeling brewmaster. So, for me, Guardian, it does the job, if I want to tank in my druid, I can do it, I just, you know, I'm not tanking in style, I suppose. And finally, we have Balance. Balance was completely overhauled in Legion. Gone are the days of following a bar without satisfying control over how your class plays. But, is the Legion alternative better? Well, to find out, let's take a look at the gameplay. Okay, time for the Balanced Druid gameplay explainer. Of course, we do have to barrel through these pretty quickly or else this video will take an age. So, essentially, this is a caster. It is a builder spender spec. You build up astral power and then you spend it on a few abilities. It does have a few unique twists, though. So, we've got two damage over time effects, Sunfire and Moonfire. The main thing you need to know is Sunfire is an AoE dot, so it will apply to a whole bunch of targets, but uh, Moonfire, you've got to apply individually to targets. Okay, so let's just go apply them to these guys. We're then going to just use Solar Wrath to generate Astral Power. Solar Wrath does a little bit of damage, kind of low, generates some Astral Power. It's your main Astral Power generator if you've got nothing else to do in a single target situation. Lunar Strike um, is a bit different, longer cast time. It does have a bit of an AoE component to it, though, which is uh, kind of different. Now, you've seen I've got enough Astral Power that I can use a Star Surge. Star Surge does a bunch of damage, and the important thing is if I use it right now, you can see it's given me one charge of... Lunar Empowerment and Solar Empowerment. These will increase the damage of my next Solar Wrath by like 117%. So I then use the two of these. They get buffed up with damage. I'm just going to reapply my dots, of course. And this has given me enough that I can do another Star Surge. And there you go. That's kind of the core of how this gameplay works. Just that it's not always that simple. Um, because these can stack up to three times. So... As an example, if you know that you've got a trinket that you can use, or maybe your main DPS cooldown, which for me is Incarnation uh, Chosen of a Loon, then maybe you want to stack up some charges of these guys and also try to pull up some astral power so that when you use your big, your big cooldown, you know, you can instantly be firing off the empowered, uh, you know, the empowered lunar strikes and solar rats, and then followed up with star searches. And I guess the a part of the gameplay challenge of that is ensuring that you're not also capping astral power at the same time. And that kind of is a core part of um, how the, the gameplay really feels with these guys. It's the sort of thing where it is very simple on a base level, but getting the most out of it does actually require thought and planning. As an example, many people will always try to have at least one, um, you know, able to cast one star surge, so that if they need to move in a fight, well, you cast your star surges and you move. Because, as an example, you know, your Solar Wrath and stuff there, hard cast to, uh, stood still. Now, let's talk about the other sort of really cool thing about this spec, which is the artifact ability. So, if I use it now, it's called New Moon, uh, and gives me 10 astral power, super quick, doesn't do much damage, kind of boring. But now it's turned into Half Moon now that I've used it. This does way more damage, gives me way more astral power, bit of a slower cast time. Now it has turned into Full Moon. This does massive damage and generates 40 Astral Power, which of course is enough for a Star Surge. And that all is, um, you know, three charges based on a recharge system. So, again, much like I was talking about pulling up the Astral Power and managing your charges of these guys, managing your charges of this also comes into play. So, even though it has a low ability count for many specs, the gameplay actually has lots of pretty cool implications. Now, let's finally just cover the AoE component, so I'm going to spread my dots, and then I'm going to do um, solar... Um, not solar fire, um, starfall on them, so this is 60 astral power. It does some damage, as you can see, but the important thing is that it increases the damage from ticks of your dots by, like, 150%. So, a lot of what you're doing in an AoE situation is you are spreading your dots. And the way that it kind of works is your sunfire is an AoE, 
but a lot of your generation of astral powers because you're just going mad trying to get your moon fires up and everything in existence. Um, and then, of course, you're throwing down... Come on, a little bit more, a little bit more. Ah, there we go. And then, you know, you, you throw that down and you get to be very happy as yellow numbers populate your screen. But... I think that is pretty much the core of how balance plays. Uh, if you want the full deets, you can check out a guide, but uh, this ain't a guide, and I think this is enough that you can really understand the core of it. So, let's move on to the opinion bit. So now that we know how it plays, what do I think? Uh, in short, I think it's great. It's not standout, but it's great. The thing that I really do like is the pacing, and I kind of alluded to this with Astral Power and how, you know, you're getting your Astral Power, you're spending it in your empowered stuff, and it kind of creates this feedback loop where you're getting more Astral Power back, and that's really fun. And then, of course, we've got our multi-dotting, which I love, and then, you know, doing our empowered lunar and solar stuff is super fun, especially if you're talented to have the empowerment reduce the cast time. So, for me, just that whole core gameplay thing is really good, but what about the more, like, advanced elements? So, Star Surges, uh, it's an instant cast, deals direct damage, which means that pulling up your astral power to allow for multiple star surges on the move is a way that more highly skilled players can differentiate themselves. Doing that well and tying that in with knowing a boss fight, to me, that's interesting to keep track of and it's really satisfying. Then we've got our artifact ability and how that plays in with your incarnation. Um, incarnation is your only really big DPS cooldown, increases your astral power generation, big damage boost, so playing around that to get the most usage out of the cooldown it's like it's one of the ways you really stand out as a balanced druid doing all of that's really fun so you want to pull up your um, you know your empowerment charges your astral power for your star surges and manage your artifact ability well so that you're cramming all of that in you know as much into that 30 second window as you can and when you do that right you know it's like the metaphorical aligning of the stars uh, of just, you know, lining everything up and just executing it right and seeing a tremendous amount of damage, that's really fun. Um, so I think for me, that really is the, the overall good thing. Plus, the increased astral power generation increases the pace of the gameplay, which to me makes things more exciting and breaks up the pace of the spec. Then for AoE scenarios, I think it's really fun because of Starfall. I like it a lot. Um, it's a stack of damage and the multi-dotting component all plays into a style that I really enjoy. So overall, this spec has a pace and a flow that I really like. It might struggle for me against the Fire or Frost Mage because I think they're really amazing, but it's certainly a great cast. So overall, I think the Druid's great. You can play every role in the game, and with the exception of Guardian, you can do it in a really fun spec. Plus, being a Druid is just fun. Your various forms are great. They're really, you know, just like thematically and all of that, and also in terms of convenience. Flight form is just amazing, and I always miss it after I've been playing Druid for a bit. Plus, being able to interact with objects while in travel form is just so damn handy. So it's got great specs for the most part and just generally being a druid and that toolkit, that's really fun as well. So overall, if the theme is something and the fantasy is something that you like, I think it's pretty hard to go wrong with a druid, and I maybe wouldn't have said that before patch 7.3, so I really am glad that they opened Feral up to more people, and as well, I really do find that brutal slash gameplay and managing your charges to be something that you actually can do pretty well if you're a skilled player, and uh, it's just really damn satisfying. So. Yeah, the Druid gets a pretty damn big thumbs up. And with that, that's the end of the Legion class review series. Of course, we'll be picking things up in the Battle for Azeroth beta, so stay tuned for that. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.